Mm -hmm. Unless you use one of those advanced attacks, right? So, yeah. so I mean, the whole purpose of, of the smart card as a computer is to protect itself, make this as hard as possible. Well, sometimes it's surprisingly easy. There are bugs in the JVM, and then you just can uh, basically twist the arm of the JVM and it will actually <laughs> spit out the whole contents of the yep. for you in no time. So, so if, if the state of the card, even if the state of the card is not locked, if, you, if you're able to put an extra applet next to the passport applet, say, if there's a bug in memory management, Java is supposed to you know, contain its app application, and uh, we're not supposed to uh, do, do it's supposed to be type safe. <coughs> as soon as you as you are able to find a bug in the Java card virtual machine, uh, um, you might be able to read all of the memory on the card. But that, that would also be a bug. But again, they make they make that difficult. But it's I mean, the people who develop this are just humans. <laughs> they make mistakes. Everyone is. <laughs> and again, but, uh, it's an arms race. Yeah. Well, yeah. what about? Um, what I hope to have convinced you of is that um, it's not as easy as sometimes in these more sensational newspaper articles they say, especially if you read the comments on the, on the online online version, they say, will they ever learn? Um, if you can make it, you can break it. Um, that's not true. I, they make it very, very difficult. Cryptography is, very, is a powerful tool. Um, but it's an arms race. I mean, in the end, we will break it. It won't be as easy. It's not as easy as that. Oh, it's hard to uh, convey the true difficulty of something in a news article. Yeah. Especially because a news article is usually written for uh, yeah. the general public. True. Yeah. And the Telegraph is. Um, <laughs> the Telegraph. <laughs> <laughs> it's a special kind of book. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not insulting any Telegraph readers. Oh, good. <laughs> no, 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 yes, I knew. Um, my, uh, are you ready? Yeah, because um, you uh, you said about the demonstration of the near field. Would it be uh, because I'm uh, looking at the next? Uh, It'd be fine. Yeah, it won't be a problem for you. No problem. Because if it would be possible for you, it would be interesting to have a demonstration of the near field communication. Yeah. But to be clear, it is filming. So. <laughs> so the. Don't use your own password. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you my password, but I'll, I'll put my finger uh, on it. So I also put some. Um, let me just show how it works, if it works. So there's um, the antenna is in the back here, um, and I've already put the optical key inside, right? Uh, what I'm working on, what I would like someone to work on, uh, is to actually make it possible to, to use the camera to read the machine also. Of course, that would be really cool. Just ask anyone to for a password. But, but why wouldn't that be possible? It's possible, but I haven't done it. Oh, okay, so you um, you need uh, software which uses the camera. Yeah. Okay. OCR yeah. software. Yeah. So there's Java OCR, which is a project um, that we've looked into. Google is doing that also. Yeah. Yeah. Tesseract. They have Tesseract, um, also ported to Android. You know, it's not pure Java, um, but yeah. So the antenna is uh, over here. So I'll just put my password close to it. Supposed to make a noise now. Isn't doing anything to kill it. Are we still on camera? <laughs> <laughs> Murphy's filming. Yeah. Murphy's so Next is S. Did you hear that sound? Oh, yeah, sorry. Keep it more. <laughs> uh, I will, yeah, I will. So, so actually, I don't have the key for this passport uh, in here, but I think for my identity. Could you do it again? Let me do it again. Just for the can. Yep. And you edit uh, the, the audio later on, <laughs> make the demo look really cool and good. You do it. I just put my card to it, and it's now reading. It's already showing me the document number, my date of birth, the, the issuing state, is the Netherlands. Date of expiry, um, my gender, which is male, <laughs> which is correct, um, and my name. Uh, let's see, if there's no, like, not that much privacy sensitive information here. So it's showing me you, my face. Can you see that on camera? Um, it's actually the same photo. Um, 
Um, I'll, I'll zoom in for the shorts. Did you, I'll try not to shake. <laughs> did you preload any graphic keys in your phone? Just the document number? It's, the camera actually recognizes that there is a face. Uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at least, you know, the, the, the yellow, yeah. the, the zooming po uh, point. Okay. And it also say whether the my face matches. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... Uh, next version. <laughs> yeah. Then I'll, uh, I mean, that's, that's also, that would be even more cool than just using the camera to, to read a machine readable sound, which is to do the comparison. I mean, uh, not this handset, but uh, if on some other handsets also featuring NFC, Android is able to recognize the user's face to unlock the phone. Uh, so if they can do that, they can also compare it to a picture that you just read from a document. Uh, does, do you know if that software also uh, accepts a picture of the person? My software? The, the, to unlock the phone. Can you just hold the yeah. picture in front of it? Yeah. Yeah. The first it. version in Ice Cream Sandwich, I think it was, um, didn't have blink control. Okay. But then in Jelly Bean, they included the fact that you had to blink with your eyes a couple of times. Yeah. But then still, I mean, that's vulnerable to a photo, yeah. two photos, let's say. Or a, Video. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not perfect. Um, and, uh, I think that's also what they put in a small print. Uh, so it's better to use a big code or to use um, a, a nice um, pattern and whatnot. Okay. So it works on Android, uh, but it's a crappy graphical user interface experience because I'm not an Android programmer yet. And I'm not showing all of the features, so the certificates are not there. We don't include the check. If using the root, the, the root certificate. So, but um, at least we, we proved that it is possible to, uh, to run on Android. More questions? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's still one question. Yeah. And so you now can uh, so you now can use the NFC of your mobiles to uh, to read it, yeah. uh, but not to write it. Um, well, so it's, it's a bit more subtle than that, right? Yeah. So you have one computer and another computer, yeah. uh, like a and they're talking to each other. They're sending yeah. APUs over. Uh, so, so it's not reading, writing. It's just a protocol, basically. Okay. But, but of course, the file system stored on the passport, we're reading that. Um, we could, if the passport would allow this, also write, but it doesn't allow us yeah. for us to write content. What, what would be really nice is if you could emulate a passport. If I could read a passport, and yeah. have, have a clone of that passport, it's possible. Uh, yeah. Although you can tell that there's a difference through a security mechanism known as active authentication, which I haven't explained. But suppose you could, I mean, emulating a smart card using NFC is possible in principle, but not in the current Android API. There's no way to... But can the hardware do it? The hardware can do it, yeah. So the, the chip, the NXP chip in here, could do type emulation, card emulation, yeah. But this is your pet project, or is this a uh, university project, or...? I started out as a university project, my pet project also, uh, and sometimes I, uh, I'm able to, uh, to do something in the boss's time on this project. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so so you're not, uh, I mean, it's not simply your, um, in, it's not simply your own personal interest to, to do it with mobile phones, it's really also the governments who were trying to see what is possible with this. Uh, um, so the port to Android was done by initially by a German guy, um, just to see whether it was possible. Um, I've asked around, there's, there's a, a nice LinkedIn group on e-passports and machine readable travel documents, um, and whether people would see some use cases. You know, have a, having a mobile uh, um, inspection station, as they're called, you know, being able to, to use your a generic Android phone to inspect passports, whether they would be interested in that, whether they could think of use cases. Not, I didn't get that much response. So, uh, it's, 
except from the guys that um, you know sell the, the hardware-based um, passport scanners to, to governments. Uh, they're saying oh, you you'll never be able to do OCR using the camera because you need you need to look at the machine readable zone in a different spectrum, otherwise it won't uh, things like that. Um, another uh, so if you look at use cases that are not governmental, uh, like um, you know, checking into a hotel, sometimes they ask for a passport there, for each passport, let's say. Um, in many countries, it's not even legal to give your passport to someone that isn't uh, uh, an agent from the government. Uh, so you, you're supposed to always give your passport to police if they ask for it, but not to just some random person. Uh, it, it wouldn't even be legal to do that. Strictly speaking, that's also in the Netherlands the case because you always have to have it in your own uh, possession. Yeah, yeah. So if I now would give it to you and we would be in the same room, I would strictly speaking yeah, be, but be uh, yeah. in. Uh, but still, if you go to a hotel abroad, like they, they might ask you for a passport. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you go to a car rental uh, company, they might also ask for identification. They want their car back. Um, so, so there, are, there. Are, I mean, there's common practice, and there's what's in the law, and then suddenly there's a way to automate some of that and make it easier to to use this chip. Um, well, I'm I'm still looking at use cases. You know, where will the software be uh, of use? What can you read from the passport without the information from the machine readable zone? If you know somebody's date of birth, if you know their document number. No, if, I mean, what can you do? Uh, nothing. Not much. Okay. Uh, no. uh, there's Table there. of contents, basically. Yeah, but what you can do, and this is a project that Wojciech did um, uh, with a student, I think, is look at how does the password behave? How does it react to certain unexpected APDUs that you send it? Yeah. And if it I mean, a Dutch passport is made by one company, yeah. and a German passport will be made by another company, and they might have handled, for example, error handling, they might do that slightly differently. There might be a different and kind you, of you process. You can also read which country it is. You can sort of fingerprint, just like, um, just like Nmap fingerprints yeah. for computers, um, and see how it reacts to certain... Uh, no, but, but I mean just plain... No, 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 okay. you're not supposed to. but. Um, but you can sort of... Yeah, of course you can fingerprint, but I mean, you you cannot read the... the no, no, you're not supposed to. You will always get access denied, but you can say access denied in different ways, so that's the problem. So, you can say, I don't recognize this command. But so it always, even for the most, most basic communication with it, you need the triple, the, yep. the, the yep. document number. And the that's correct. And for the very sensitive information like fingerprints, you need another key that's also a bit stronger because I can sort of guess your date of birth. Yeah. I won't do that. But um, I can I know that your your document will expire between now and five years. Yeah, so you know that it's it's from the last five years. I know that the document number they use the document number of passports used to be in sequence, right? So if I knew your date of ex expiry, I could also guess your document number up to a certain but they, they now randomized it. So your document number will be random. And it's uh, nine characters. Uh, between characters from A to C, 0 to 9, and uh, fill up one. No. So, so it's only 36 uh, char different characters there. So you don't, can. Don't tell me it's sensitive to time and attack. <laughs> no. Uh, no, but what I'm saying is the entropy of the, the machine readable zone access key is um, finite. Actually, there was some story with some passports in some time uh, about possibility, yeah, depending on the. Yeah. I don't remember the details. Um, there was some small loophole that allowed you to do to narrow at least the, 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 the space of keys, but uh, with the Italian. Uh, <laughs> Shall we, uh, shall we finish? Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you for giving your presentation, Martijn. You're welcome. And, uh,